Hello, welcome to the first of several brief overview videos about the Simplement Data Director. These small videos are going to go through the basic tools and functionality included with the Simplement Data Director. So in this first video, I'm just going to go over some of the basics about how to open the Data Director and connect it to your target Liberator database so that you can start using all the other tools. So let's assume that you already have the Data Director installed on either your work machine or installed remotely on a server or on the target database server itself. Uh, really the only requirement is that the machine it's installed on be able to, through your network, reach the Liberator target database. So in this case, this is my personal PC, I already have it installed. So I'm just going to double click the icon, it'll open up a screen like this. For a first time user, the screen is going to be blank, but because I've used this tool many times, it sort of remembers some of my previous options. But let's pretend it didn't, and I'll just enter the new. All right, so I've cleared these fields so that we can, you know, sort of start from scratch on the same page together. So first things first, we need to give the connection a server and a database. Let's start with the server. The server is going to be either the IP address or the human-friendly server name of the target server from when we installed the data liberator that replication is pointing to. And you can use this drop-down arrow to find the server if you don't know it off the top of your head. But that process is kind of slow as it has to scan through the network for available servers. So it's best if you know the server ahead of time, which I do in this case. So I'm going to use a human-friendly name. Although, again, you can use an IP address. That's fine. Next thing is we need to give it a database name. All right, so now we have a server, but now we need to give it a database name. And for this part, if you know the database name ahead of time, you can just go ahead and type it. Or actually, in this case, it can be much friendlier to use the drop-down arrow because now that we've already specified a server, there's a limited number of databases for it to search from, and it's just a much faster search in general. So this, we can see here, we have a bunch of databases to choose from. I happen to know which one we want, though. It's this libdemortp. And just a quick uh, note about the database names. This is something that is configurable and is something that is set up prior to this point in the data liberator installation process. So we generally follow a naming schema like this of lib underscore some name underscore RTP. But, you know, in reality, it's just a database. It could be named whatever you have decided to name it in your situation. So assuming you have that, we're now ready to connect, and there's two ways we can connect, because remember this is a SQL target database, so it can be Windows authentication or SQL Server authentication. The tool supports both. Uh, it doesn't really matter which one you use, so long as your the username, whether it's a Windows user or a SQL Server login, has sufficient permissions. And if you want to test that, you can just hit Test Connection here, and it'll say Success or Failure. If this connection test fails, it's probably an indicator that Either your username, be it Windows or SQL, doesn't have permissions, or that there's some sort of firewall or network issue where you cannot reach the target server and database that you need to. But in this case, I can. So we hit Connect. It'll now show a what's called the replication scenario. You can just hit OK on this. This will self-populate. It's not something you need to populate because it, it reads certain configuration tables to know what to put here. Just hit OK. And now we have fully connected the tool and are ready to go into more detail with all the many sub-tools of the data director. Thank you for watching this brief overview.